Do you have crow's feet or wrinkles around the eyes when you smile? It's good to be a happy person, always smiling and laughing, but over time you might see that your skin is pulling a little bit much when you smile in photos. Let's talk about crow's feet today. I'm Dr. Daniel Sugai. I'm a board certified dermatologist in the Seattle area. I do medical, surgical, cosmetic dermatology. I did my training at Harvard Medical School's dermatology residency program. And I'm here in the Pacific Northwest seeing patients, but also having a great time with all of you. Let's talk about three ways ways to improve crow's feet here. So when we smile, you get these lines here from the orbicularis oculi muscles that pull while we smile and we get these creases here and it also can extend below towards the zygomatic bone here and go downwards and that's a really tricky area to treat. So we'll be primarily focusing on the crow's feet outside of the orbital bone here but we'll touch on some things you can do around the eye area within the orbital bone. Number one thing you can do for crow's feet would be to keep smiling but you might want to start off your day by using some hydrator like hyaluronic acid serums. So after you cleanse in the morning while your skin's damp or if you're not washing your face and you want to spray yourself down with some La Roche-Posay or a Ven thermal spring water on your face and hydrate your skin. You wanna put a hydrator like hyaluronic acid, my favorite being La Roche-Posay, How You B5, but there's also other hydrators out there, other serums like Vichy's Mineral 89. You can get the Ordinary's uh, hyaluronic acid. You can do the Inkyless hyaluronic acid serum. Those are all great. You can even do Snail Mucin by Causarex, which is one of my favorites. It's a great hydrator. Love how it plumps up my skin. But in general, for the forehead and around the eyes I like to put on a hyaluronic acid serum so this is a little cute sample I have in clinic and this is just great to put on damp skin and then what you do is you put a moisturizer over it see that light gooey like snail mucin and you just apply it right there right over the cheekbone and the crow's feet area and then I also like to bring it up to the forehead and then seal it in with your favorite moisturizer like Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream, you can do Vanna Cream Daily Moisturizer, you can do the CeraVe AM Facial Moisturizer with sunscreen in it or La Roche-Posay's Tolarian Double Repair UV with moisturizer and SPF. Neutrogena makes a nice moisturizer with SPF, their Hydro Boost line with SPF is really nice. So you can go ahead and either put a dedicated moisturizer or a moisturizer with SPF right over it to seal in that hydration that this sugar hyaluronic acid did. It just soaked up all that moisture so that is a nice way to reduce the fine lines there that's in the morning always wear your sunscreen before heading out and then if you're outside for a while reapply every two hours and then at bedtime number two what you want to do is apply a retinoid so a retinoid would either be prescription tretinoin which is a vitamin A derivative cream or it could be a gel that I prescribe in clinic and that can help with fine lines and wrinkles by increasing collagen production and it will really help those fine lines and wrinkles over time but it does take over four to six months of consistent use before you see improvement in texture tone works on pores hyperpigmentation it really is amazing and not everyone can tolerate it anecdotally there are patients who come in saying they use tretinoin too close to the eye and they've gotten chronic dry eye and this has been a big debate amongst dermatologists and eye doctors. Ophthalmologists and optometrists will discourage the use of retinoids of any sort, retinol or tretinoin around the eyes. For me, I look at the literature, I have not found any formal case that's been published of a retinoid causing chronic dry eye, shrinking the oil glands or affecting the goblet cells or the lubricating glands of the eye with topical retinoid use around the eyes. For me though, I say just in case, when you're using a prescription high potency tretinoin or tazeratine, use it outside of the orbital bone so if you're treating your crow's feet totally fine to get your retinoid your tretinoin over here to help treat those fine lines and wrinkles if you get it within the orbital bone I worry about irritation of the thin skin which is the thinnest skin of your body is the eyelid skin you don't want to get your tretinoin there because it will cause irritation redness if you have problems with it diffusing that way and it's causing irritation on your eyelid I would put a layer of aquaphor or Vaseline or your favorite moisturizer because some people are prone to getting milia or those little white heads on the eyelids. If your ointment is too thick and it's causing clogging of your pores, you might just want a moisturizing cream there before applying your retinoid to the rest of your face. There are retinols though out there that you might be able to tolerate better than tretinoin because tretinoin can cause irritation, redness, not just on your eyelid skin, but on the rest of your face. And I always say tretinoin is best used when it's over the entire face as field therapy, not as 
spot treatment for acne or brown spots here and there, you wanna apply it to the entire face, just a pea-sized amount, but not everyone can tolerate it. I know a lot of dermatologists who can't use a prescription tretinoin, so they have to do an over-the-counter retinol. Retinol can still be irritating, but less so because less potent. Retinol also has been shown in studies and it's definitely evidence-backed where you can see it improve collagen production in the dermis. There are different brands I've talked about on the channel. Rock makes a nice retinol. It can be fragrance in the long tube, or you can see it in a jar that's fragrance-free where you have that little pump. You just press on the top of the jar and it dispenses the pea-sized amount for your face. I like Olay Retinol 24. I like CeraVe Resurfacing Retinol Serum. Kiehl's makes a fast-release serum, but there's also a micro-dose serum for those who are beginners. Those are both really good. And then, of course, my favorite is the Alpha Rep by Skin Better Science that combines lactic acid, glycolic acid, and their own retinoid. I like those retinoids a lot, and they're quite gentle, I'd say, for my patients. In terms of eye creams, the only retinol eye cream that I have used personally the longest without irritation and my patients is Rox eye retinol cream you can apply it within the orbital bone but be very careful I would moisturize with it be careful of irritation do not get it within your conjunctival lid not too close to the eye keep that in mind that that's probably the only retinol that I've used consistently without any issue to help with any crepiness underneath the eye and then also just the eyelid itself can get wrinkly over time so wear your sunglasses guys because I am really getting frustrated by all these creators on TikTok coming out saying that your eyes need to see the sun for you to protect your skin from the sun by making melanin because your eyes have to communicate to their skin that there's UV rays present at the time. No, your skin has photoreceptors to tell your skin to make melanin to protect itself from UV radiation that's incoming. You need to wear sunglasses. These creators talking about ditching your sunglasses, they're putting you at risk for premature cataracts and pinguicula plaques in your eyes because that sun damage can really wreck your eyes. So you wanna protect them as much as possible as well as protect the skin around the eyes, the delicate skin, the eyelid skin, as well as your crow's feet. So big thing. In addition, a bonus tip, wear your sunglasses, guys, okay? So we talked about using your hyaluronic acid in the morning, then your moisturizer to seal it in, and then your sunscreen. Wear your sunglasses if you're outdoors. But at bedtime, use your retinoid, whether prescription, tretinoin, or over-the-counter retinol. Now finally, I say the best for last, the king of crow's feet treatment would have to be Botox. It's a neuromodulator. Whether it's Dysport, Xeomin, Botox, a neuromodulator is so key in this area. And I start injecting this area for patients in their mid 20s and up where you just need a very small amount maybe two injections if you're a young patient just a small amount of units but it will pick up you might need three injections on each side as we get older and we increase the amount of units depending on how much you're pulling there now genetics does play a big part some people may require less units here than a 25 year old who is pulling a lot here and getting a lot of lines that's smiling males are getting crow's feet done more readily now before it was mainly females but now we're getting a lot of guys coming in to get Botox in this area. And Botox is nice, it works quite quickly. Within two days, you start seeing it work and kick in, but you see its max effects two weeks after the injections, and the effects last about three to four months. Usually you see that benefit three to four months here, your forehead. This though, maybe two to three in the beginning when you first start off is how long the Botox will last. It kind of wears off faster here around the crow's feet area. And this is the highest risk of bruising, so expect some bruising after your injections, potentially. So try to avoid alcohol and maybe if you can hold off on the, the ibuprofen before coming in, that would be great in terms of minimizing the risk of bruising in that area. Now, this orbicularis oculi muscle, though, you really want to try and decrease the movement there because that's the responsible muscle. Now, injectors, you want to make sure that you are not going too low into the zygomaticus muscle because you get an asymmetric smile. So you make sure you go and see an, an experienced injector who does not go too low there and try and chase those wrinkles that go downwards. Botox, if it's placed incorrectly, can go into the wrong muscle and you won't be happy for those three months while the Botox is sitting there in the muscle. So you want to knock out this muscle here. So make sure you see an experienced injector who gives you good post-procedure instructions. You don't wanna go work out and do CrossFit right after. You wanna take it easy, drink lots of water, stay upright for the length of time that they counsel you on and definitely don't go lying down in a pillow to get a massage right after your Botox appointment.
second. That is the three best things you can do for crow's feet. From a dermatologist here, I treat crow's feet every day in clinic, and I do that hyaluronic acid trick before a big event, before going and doing public speaking or going on camera, and then every night I'm doing that retinoid, every night. If you can tolerate, do it every night and moisturize after that before going to bed, and then wear your sunglasses, of course your sunscreen, and then a little bit of Botox goes a long way there. So hope this video is helpful. Guys, please leave a comment on any skincare topics you want me to address, any big questions that you had that you wanted me to address in a Dr. Sugai Explains video. I'd be happy to go that direction in terms of responding to comments and hearing what your thoughts are. We're four years into the channel almost. I appreciate you all. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys for the next video. All right, take it easy. Peace.